Hi, I'm Pastor June Wilkins. I'm the pastor of Yosemite Lutheran Church in Columbus, Ohio. We are a congregation of the ELCA. This is our video worship for Lent 4, March 22nd, 2020. We're doing it online because of the virus. We'll share scripture today. We'll share a message, a prayer, a hymn, and then we will have communion here. If you'd like to get your own bread and grape juice, you can share it at home. If you'd like to give to Gethsemane, you can go to our church website at www.gethsemane.org. That's G-E-T-H-S-E-M-A-N-E dot -E org. And click on giving, and you can see the ways that you can give. And now let's begin. Let us pray. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The psalm for today is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. The gospel for today is written in Matthew 16. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? This is the Gospel of the Lord. So the last two weeks have seemed like years to me. Every day it seems like something was taken away from us. From little things like a dinner at a favorite restaurant to bigger things like gathering with friends, to bigger things even like worshiping God together. Right now, I am grieving. I think we're all grieving. In normal times, if just one of these things were lost, we would need time to process, to recover. But we all lost so much all at once. So give yourself some slack if you're not at your best right now. I know I've needed to give myself some slack too. Even though there are certainly people who are worse off in worse situations than we are right now, we have to remember them at this time especially. We have to remember that we are suffering. Jesus says, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Well, this cross has been given to us. It's been thrust into our hands. And we are suffering right now. We are suffering, though, in Jesus' way, for the sake of others. This whole country, the whole world, actually, is in shutdown, facing an uncertain future. Businesses are closed. People are without jobs. We are suffering. But we are suffering for the sake of others, for the sake of that 2% who are the most vulnerable to this virus. We are suffering for the sake of the healthcare workers who will be on the front lines of this. No matter what you say about this country or this world, this is a noble act. It is worthy of praise. We are suffering for the sake of others. I was in a class on family systems and church relations, and one quote that stuck with me was, 
do, do not waste your suffering. If this whole virus were taken away tomorrow, which I have to tell you I am praying for every day, what would we learn from this experience? Would we just go back to the way it was before and forget about it? Would we waste it? Or will we learn from it and be different because of it? What have you learned already in just two short weeks? I've learned how much I value the small businesses that are around us and serve us. I've learned how much my little family means to me. I've learned how much I miss my community of faith, the discussions out in the narthex before church, how much I value seeing each one of you every week. And I've learned how much I value the Eucharist together. And I've learned how much I took that all for granted. I also have new compassion for people who deal with these kind of insecurities every day. Lack of food whose lives are filled with panic and fear daily. I've also learned that helping others is the best way to get out of panic and fear and anxiety. Serving people in our food pantry with our brave and loyal volunteers brought me out of my fear and worry this week. If you're there too, just do something for somebody else. It does wonders. And we are going to help each other through this whole thing. And I've also learned something else that I should have known before. As I've wondered how all of this will end, what the solution to this terrible problem is, how I can't figure it out for myself, I've learned that all we can do is rely on God. We can do what's in our power, we can pay attention to doctors and researchers, we can listen to the, 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 the rules of our government in this time, but in the end, all we can do is put our trust in God's mercy and love and resurrection. Put our faith in Christ's life of service to others and his path through death to life. I mean, I've heard it before and I've said it before, but now I know it. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. Even though we walk through the darkest valley. We will fear no evil, because God is with us. Let us not waste our suffering. Let us take up Christ's cross and follow him through this darkest valley and into new life. Amen. So now we're going to sing a hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd. Join me here.
And now let us pray. Beloved friends, in this season of repentance and healing, we accept God's invitation to be ever mindful of the needs of others, offering our prayers on behalf of God's community in the church and the world. God of grace and glory, we pray for the church that it would be bold and creative in these times of fear and anxiety. We pray for our communities that they would love one another and reach out to our neighbors. We pray for the leaders of this world working through unprecedented times. For President Trump, for Dr. Anthony Fauci, for Governor DeWine, for Lieutenant Governor Husted, for the Ohio Health Director, Dr. Amy Acton. Guide them as they work for the good of the people they serve and as they make decisions that they work in the best interest of the most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who put themselves at risk to serve our communities, for nurses, doctors, hospital workers, for medical research teams and those working on cures and alleviations to this virus for public servants and first responders, for grocery store workers, for caretakers and healthcare workers. We pray for those who are unemployed, whose employment is in question. We pray for all of us who are living under the pressure of angst and uncertainty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for our members, for Mark, for Andrea, for her children as they reach milestones in their education and prepare for the next chapter in their lives. For Eric and Sharon, we give thanks for the entire staff of the James Medical Center and for good care during this year. We offer prayers of thanksgiving and support for family and friends here at Gethsemane and outside the church. We pray for James pray for Judy and thanks that her car accident was not more serious. And we pray for Melanie and her family. And we give thanks that Dave and Judy's son Andrew received a negative test and is hoping to get back to work. We give thanks for Roland and Lois's 40th wedding anniversary today. And we give thanks for the saints who have guided us in times of trial and joy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, we are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbor's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving where we are, whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. Amen. Now we'll share communion. If you'd like to put me on pause, you can get your bread and wine. Let us pray. Holy and generous host, you set a table where we feast as friends. Prepare us to witness to your goodness with every gift you have given us to share, that all people may know your peace through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. When we strayed, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets and storytellers to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice, your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He gave God thanks and praise, and he gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take and drink. This is my blood shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Join our prayers and praise with those who have been tellers of your story in every age, that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the gospel in hope of your Son. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty God, both now and forever. Now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. In this bread, there is healing. In this wine, there is wholeness. Come to the table of life. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. May the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and reveal to you God's grace. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to do some announcements. Just follow me down there. Um, we'll continue with our online worship. We'll upload it on Sunday morning uh, as, as quick as we can. Confirmation are having an online chat today at 11 a.m. Uh, Play and Learn closed on Friday. We'll be caring for our staff. Please pray for all of them. We gave out uh, prepackaged food to our food pantry friends on Wednesday, just kind of a drive-by thing that was very successful. We served a lot of people. Give thanks for our volunteers that still do that. Uh, the, the Red Cross is asked to use our building for blood drives using their own volunteers. So many of their places are closed and they, uh, there is a blood shortage. So if you haven't given blood yet, please do that. We have some vulnerable people in our congregation that might need your help. If you're willing to uh, deliver groceries or other things, please let us know. You can email me, pastorjune at gethsemane.org. People have talked about making masks for healthcare workers. If you can sew even a little and are willing to do this, let me know. And our Gethsemane phone calls have started. Please look for someone in the congregation to give you a call. Um, our staff is working during this time, so please pray for all of them. And we need your financial support. So please go to www.gethsemane.org and click on giving. And now we'll say our mission statement. Please say it with me. The people of Gethsemane. Sing God's good news. Share God's unconditional welcome. Care for each other. Serve those in need. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.